the Lord is saying you cannot continue to be the same. How much longer can you continue to be tired of being tired, but you still choose your own way over God's way? How much more can you walk with emptiness on the inside of you? How much more can you live your life godless, living your life without direction, living your life without guidance, living your life without hope? You don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. And you came upon this video. And I believe God is saying that he wants you to realize that he's the only way. There are voids that he can only fill, that he placed in you to realize that he can only fill them. But you've tried relationships, you've tried drugs, you've tried sex, you've tried everything, but they never satisfied you at all. You were always left with disappointment and emptiness. You were always left with brokenness. And all God is saying is come to me so that I can give you rest for your tiredness. Come to me, all who are weary, and I will break the chains off of your mind. I will break the chains off of you. There's some watching. You've never really had an experience with God, but an experience with man, an experience with churchy people, an experience with people who are fake in the church, an experience with people who aren't really wanting to be devoted at church. They just attend just to attend. They, they, they serve at the church, but they're not really living it out. And you thought that, oh, Christianity is this, and oh, Jesus is this, and God is this. God isn't real because where was he at when I was crying out? Where was he at when I was at this place? Can I tell you that God was on his way, but you just had to hold on a little bit longer? Can I tell you that if, if, if you were to keep your faith, and you were to hold on and there's still a chance because we serve a God who redeems and we serve a God who restores. God wants to restore you. God wants to, he wants to make you whole because what sin does to your soul, it, it deforms your soul. It scatters your soul around in places that it shouldn't be. And it, and it causes you to feel so broken and empty and it causes you to feel like you have no purpose. How can you continue in that in that darkness? How can you continue thinking that you have to be a Christian and be depressed? How can you continue to feel like anxiety is always going to be as a Christian? But you, you wonder, if, if Jesus died for me, why is it that I, I thought he broke the power of sin, but I'm still in the sin? I thought that he bore our sicknesses, but I'm still dealing with sickness. And, and, and you think for a moment, and you just say, why is it that Jesus died for me and he broke the power of sin, but yet I feel bound to it every day? If the devil's really defeated, why do I feel defeated every single day? Can I tell you something? There's a spiritual realm. And the devil's not in hell, he's on earth. His entire kingdom is established on earth. In Job, it says that he was roaming the earth. Satan's kingdom is on earth. That's why you see so much wickedness on earth. If Satan was bound in hell, he wouldn't be able to do the things that he's doing on earth. He's not omnipresent like God is. He's just a person. He's just one being. Him and other demons and other principalities and other demonic spirits, under other evil and unclean spirits. But God is wanting you to know today that the devil is fighting over your soul. There's a, there's a war over your soul. Do you understand? Salvation is free, but there's a cost that comes with sacrifice. When it comes to this walk, you cannot be the same way. I know you're tired of being broken. I know you're tired of being hurt. I know you're tired of being mistreated, but it's going to take you surrendering your life to him and realizing that it is his loving kindness that's better than life. David said his loving kindness, his grace, his presence is better than life. It's better than life itself. If only you could disconnect from the world and connect with God. You would be able to realize how, how powerful and strong His presence is. You will never want to leave it. I believe some of you are even encountering His presence now. As you're watching this video, 
You've been feeling lonely. You've been feeling by yourself. You've been feeling so broken and you just don't know how to get restored. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. Your life is transitioning. I'm seeing this for somebody. This may not be for a certain person, but this may be for another watching. There's a transition happening in your life and you don't know what's next. You don't know what to do. You feel like giving up and you're on the verge of just throwing in the towel and giving up everything. You're on the verge of just saying, you know what, this God stuff isn't real. This Jesus stuff isn't real. This just isn't for me. I'm not able to do it. But can I tell you that God is giving you the grace and the mercy to keep pushing and to keep going? Can I tell you that God is giving you strength even right now as you're watching this video? He's giving you strength. He's giving you the, the might and the power to endure. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. And his goal is to try to make you believe in his life so that you can be deceived. That you will always be bound to anxiety and depression. No. God has came to set you free from these things. I'm telling you, if you're watching this video, I want you to know that most of the problems that you've dealt with in your life is demonic. Depression is not this natural thing that, oh, I'm going to just go take medication for this and it's going to go away. Most people are bound to medication or antidepressants, whatever it is, and are still struggling with depression. That goes to show that that is not a, dem that is not a natural thing. It's a demonic thing. Demons are assigned to every Christian who tries to devote themselves to God. And why? You say, why does the devil hate us so much? Because you look just like him. You look just like God is what I mean to say. You look like the person he rebelled against. We're made in God's image. And if the devil knows that we have the potential as his children, as God's children, to advance his kingdom, and to decrease his, he's gonna get mad and say, I don't want more people making it with the Father. I want, I want more people to come with me because if they can advance the kingdom, I lose more souls. I want more souls with me so that I can torment them. I want more souls with me so that I can ruin their lives. Most people are deceived to think that earth is already hell. You haven't seen hell, bro. You haven't seen hell. I mean, yes, there may have been, um, you know, there's suffering in this life. Yes, there's suffering in this life. But there's no other regret that you can have in this life than to realize that you messed up your time on earth when you could have been right with God and there's no going back. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. And you can't go back. There's nothing like a regret. And we want to hold regrets on earth. We want to hold regrets on earth. Let those things go. Those things don't matter. Let those things go. Stop wishing what you could have done better. Well, I would have been here if I wouldn't have done this. Stop looking back at the past. That's what's holding you back. That's what's compromising you. Stop looking back. Stop looking back and look forward. Paul said, I leave the things behind me. The Bible says, I leave the things behind me so that I can look ahead. Look ahead. Jesus said, do not be like Lot's wife. He said, remember Lot's wife. Don't look back. There's nothing to look back to. Come on, backsliders. There's nothing to go back to. What are you going to go back to? Depression? Addiction? Emptiness? Fornication? What does it do for you? What does it gain? You will put yourself in a cycle more and more when you realize, what am I going back to? What, 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 else can, what else can I live for? Who else can I serve but Him? There's, there's, there's no other solution. There's no other answer but Him. We won't do it for you. You can get high all you want, but you got to serve the Most High. He'll give you a peace that you'll never forget. I used to smoke too. I was addicted. I felt like I needed that. But God wants you to know that I, when I encountered his peace, when I encountered his presence, I was like, I don't need this. I don't need weed. I don't need to seek for validation in other people so that my wounds of rejection can be healed. God is the person. He's the father. A father to the fatherless. 
a father to the fatherless. Even when my real father is not available, he's a father to the fatherless. David said, even when my father and mother forsake me, he will always be there to take care of me. But when we repent and when we turn away from our sins and we start to bear fruits where they are repentance, meaning we prove by the way that we live that we've actually turned away from our sins. You can't just honor him with your lips and your heart be far from him. That is the most emptiest thing ever to come to church with a fake holy act that God can clearly see through. And then you go home and you just live however you want in sin. It's the most emptiest feeling to base your whole foundation of your Christian lifestyle under a lie. The truth shall set you free, but we shy away from the truth because you know that the truth hurts. The truth will go against your lifestyle. The truth of the gospel will go against your lifestyle. It can go against the relationship you're in right now. It can go against so much. It can go against your logical argument in your mind. Y'all, my camera just died. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. I forgot where I was at, but I'm gonna start with this because God just pulled me to make this video and <sighs> there's nothing else to live for in this life but to live for him he he is the true answer to all of our problems all of our solutions all of the things that we tried in our pride to fix another lie that the devil tries to put people through stop thinking that you have to be clean before God before coming to him come to him messed up come to him filthy so that he can make you clean that's the whole point God wants to clean you up. He wants to restore you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to teach you when nobody else can teach you. God wants to teach you. He wants to counsel you when there's nobody else to counsel you. He wants to, he wants to restore when no one else in the family wants to restore. He wants to accept you when nobody else wanted to accept you. He is the God. He is the God who loves you so much. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The God who loves you so much. And all he wants for you, all he wants from you is your willingness. He doesn't look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart.